Dr. Gupta? Yes, sir. You're it. I'm it. <laughs> Max Page only knows one speed, full steam ahead. I don't know if I can keep up with this kid. Now, you've probably seen Max before, even though you might not know it. Remember this Volkswagen ad from Super Bowl 45? Darth Vader? Nope, just Max. Yay, we have Max. And within mere seconds of meeting him, Max was asking about my daughters. Three girls. Let me guess. Hey, Dr. Four year old? Yep. Two year old. Yep. Dang, six year old. You got it. How did you know? Huh. We're at the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles with Max and his brother Els to see Dr. Michael Silka. Pay for your pacemaker check? Uh -huh. Good. That's right. Max has a pacemaker. Actually, it's his third, and he's only six years old. For parents Jennifer and Buck, the first sign of trouble came before Max was even born. My 38-week appointment, we found out that Max had structural damage to his heart. They didn't know, they couldn't get a good heartbeat. They took him emergency C-section, born in a whirlwind. The last feeling I remember is it's, it's almost hopelessness because it's out of my hands as a dad. And as a dad, you, that's not something you're used to. I just said, please just save my son. That's all we're here for. I don't even know what you just said. I don't understand anything you're gonna do. I just, I need you to save my son. I need to have a chance to know this kid. It's hard to imagine, but for mom and dad, it was all a blur. Max was born with a heart condition known as Tetralogy of Fallot. It's rare and includes four separate problems in the heart, which leads to a lack of oxygen in the blood. Without a pacemaker, and eight major operations so far, Max probably wouldn't be here. Can you feel it, Max? Can you feel the pacemaker? Um, if, if you like touch it or like something hits it, that's kind of where I ever feel it. You know, it's, it's like the movie Cars, you know, they show the pistons and the engines going around. You want them working together, right? You don't want one going like this and the other one going at a different rate. You have to have them working together. And something like this for, for Max or for any child like Max uh, should be cared for in a children's hospital? I mean, could any hospital? Uh, oh, no, no. This is a fairly sophisticated, fairly subspecialized area of medicine. I'm, what, I'm a pediatric electrophysiologist. They're probably slightly over 100 of us in the country. Um, so there aren't that many people who really do what we do. It's that kind of skill that brought Jennifer and Buck to the Children's Hospital. There are just 56 of them in the whole country. Yeah. Dr. Robert Adler is the vice chair of pediatrics for the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. It seems like an obvious concept that you know children's hospitals are going to be different than adult hospitals, but you say there's only 56 in the country? We represent just 1% of all the hospitals in the United States, but we're responsible to train over 40% of all the pediatricians and 45% of all the pediatric specialists to take care of the kids. Kids like Max, who need specialized care from doctors trained through the Children's Hospital Graduate Medical Education Program, which is currently on the chopping block because of budget cuts in Washington. But what we hear a lot is there's not a big enough population. That translates to there's not enough sick kids or kids don't make it long enough for their research to be done. Um, my answer to that is there's one and his name is Max and he's mine. We'll do whatever we can do. Fortunately, the pages are privately insured, but it is still expensive. Our insurance premium is more than our mortgage and our car payments combined. So it's a tremendous stretch for us to do it, but that's the level of care Max requires. In the face of massive budget crunches across the country, that kind of care might be at risk for kids who rely on Medicaid. There are about 30 million children who are now covered by Medicaid. It's the most common insurance for children. And we see a lot of parents who have either lost their job recently or having a hard time finding a job who then come to us with the Medicaid insurance. And it's critical for us to be able to provide that for the children. 30 million. 30 million. <laughs> On behalf of all those kids, Max is headed to the nation's capital to put his force behind the National Association of Children's Hospitals. Max and his family came to Washington with a group of kids to put the pressure on lawmakers. We are one family from California trying to make a difference. To protect Medicaid coverage for children and to preserve federal funding for the programs that train nearly half the nation's pediatricians. He met with lawmakers from both parties. I, I really want to help my hospital. It's really, 
neat hospital. So it's hard for something like a worthy institution like this. And, and Jennifer, what, so if, if the message is not received, what, what, is, what is the worst case scenario here? What, what happens as a result? Well, as a result, the funding will get cut for Medicaid for the children and the graduate programs at our hospital, we're at Children's Hospital Los Angeles. We have 200 pedi um, pediatric, um, pediatricians in training at any one time. That number at just our hospital would drop down to 50. It would um, decrease by 75%. So it would have a short-term and a very long-term impact on um, and not just the specialist, but the basic pediatrician, which every pregnant woman goes and inter interviews pediatricians as soon as, you know, about your eighth month. So it's, it's really important long term. Yeah, no, no, no doubt about it. And Max, I mean, you're, you're sort of representing a lot of, a lot of kids. I mean, a lot of kids are, are, are looking to you and, and, and uh, hoping that uh, the, the senators and the, the congressional leaders are listening to you. Do you feel like they were listening to you, Max? I feel a lot like they're listening to me, huh? Mm -hmm.